Hi guys. I have something to give you guys. Yeah, I used to have this guy's job. Okay. <laughs> Start the meeting, or did you already start? Oh, we haven't yet. You need to hit the ladies. No, no, I'm, I'm good. Here. Okay. I have something to give everybody. That's for a discussion point at some point. Okay. Well, it's seven. Bang on the wall, Gina. I don't know. We're ready to go. All right. Yeah, we are ready to go. Okay. I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Littleton Board of Health, March twenty second, two thousand sixteen. We have a number of uh, administrative matters. I'll go through a couple. Some are on here. Uh, some we have documents on. Some we don't. First thing I wanted to do is remind folks that uh, as it gets warmer, uh, leaves begin to compost again and they begin to degrade. So um, I think by the end of the summer we'll have a full season with Hallorans. We'll have a good scope of what's happened there and, and documentation of that. But I expect we're going to get order complaints during the summer. I'd like to remind folks to direct them to the form we put out and also to Shelley if they have any questions. So that one, and we're probably all going to have to go out as long as people are on the board and check those out as we can just to sort of... Uh, make it as objective as possible uh, at what point is <coughs> do we have um enough data to put it together and look at my suggestion is we look at it at the end of the summer when they start bringing leaves in because that's when we started this process so at that point we'll have a good season and it's a seasonal thing with it warms up it's wet it's cold it's you know um the compost will, uh, we will have loads of leave go through the entire process so we'll have a, a not perfect because every winter varies and summer varies and that sort of thing but we'll have, have a pretty decent snapshot of what it looks like there yeah. and i think then we can bring in the the, the residents again present some of the data see what mr halloran has for what he's done and see in between see if it corresponds and at that point we've got a couple options um if we declare them a nuisance uh we can shut them down jim has some air quality regulations that he feels we can reference i personally don't feel are appropriate but that can be a discussion of the board but at that point you know the nuisance it's not well defined uh, but i think we need to look at it over a season so we're not that far away at the end of the summer yeah. okay Okay. So, but again, we, we do need to kind of look at this consistently throughout that season. Uh, the second issue we have has to do with the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. Uh, I think you've all seen this. Essentially, the selectmen, I mean, we make a recommendation to the selectmen on whether we approve, don't approve, or don't care on this one. Uh, my personal feeling, I, I had some issues with this. I still have some where we had very little information to go on. Um, so I had asked a number of questions. I think uh, Shelley had included them in the last board packet. One of my concerns was, is the Board of Health, we shouldn't really be looking at the nuisance control part of this. It really has to do with the vector control. Uh, one of the things we got from Tim at the Mosquito Project was that we haven't have had a positive West Nile or Triple E in the past decade here. So I don't think there's a, so that suggests to me there's not a very strong public health element to this. I did call Katie Brown, who's the state uh, public health veterinarian at DPH. She oversees the Arbor virus uh, uh, management program there. I worked with her when I was on the Mosquito Control Board. Uh, I like Katie a lot. She knows her stuff. <coughs> and what it boils down to is she, I, I explicitly asked her if we had, because they used to test birds. And we've had one bird submitted from Littleton. It tested negative. It's not a very good data point. Uh, what Katie said was there is some public health significance to the testing. Um, and she's cited, you know, in the last five years, we've had spot triple E's in surrounding towns. Acton, Concord had a, a positive horse. Uh, certainly nothing that will warrant an aerial spray or anything like that. But triple E's been moving around kind of unexpectedly for the last 20 years. So her preference would be that we do some surveillance. The problem, and this is a statewide problem, mosquito control, is we've got basically a $45,000 bill. A very small portion of that is, is surveillance. The rest of it, in my opinion, uh, others certainly have their own, is that we're kind of being railroaded into paying a lot of money for two things. Um, one, which is the nuisance control, which is probably well-founded. I've got some issues with that, but that's, but a small part of it is the surveillance. And when I see some value in the surveillance, I, I don't, it's certainly not worth the $45,000. So with that, I'll open it up to discussion. Okay. Um, so as someone who is trained in vector biology and infection control of infectious diseases via vectors, that would be me, 
I would say that what the questions we need to ask, and you touched on it a little bit, is not so much, gee, what hasn't happened in Littleton, because it very well could be that they're doing a great job with Littleton. They've figured out the spots, the niches, that sort of a thing, and they're really on top of the larvicide. Um, but what's happened in surrounding towns? That will tell you truly what has been the background data. And we don't know what other towns are also doing for um, vector control. So, so the surrounding towns so, in Middlesex so, follow the same let, uh, but let same me, control that, that we do. Okay, so let me finish. In Worcester. So, so sure, they are, but they all probably make different requests. So I know from looking at the data over the past week, like, six years that I've been on the board, there's been positive West Nile and Acton. There's been some positive stuff in Harvard and I believe in Westford as well. And this is just off the top of my head looking back. And so I, um, I am definitely for larvicide surveil larviciding, surveillance of larvicide, as well as keeping What do you mean by surveillance of larvicide? Well, when they go, surveillance of larvae using larvicide to decrease Okay, the larvae. surveillance and control are different things. The larvicide are for, for control, I'm not for surveillance. Sur I know that. Is that something so, you said, so, though? Surveillance <laughs> and control of the larvae is what I am for. Okay. And if there is a spot area that does need to be sprayed, I think with the residents' consent, I'm for that. Mosquitoes don't respect political geographical boundaries. And I think it's something to really look into because I know that different towns have had positive okay. so somebody who's um, trained in mosquitoes. Somebody who's trained in public health and actually has been very active in mosquito control, I can tell you this. First of all, we have three things that are involved in, in control here. It's uh, water management to reduce standing water for mosquitoes. It's larvicide to kill the larvae and the adulticide, which kills the adult. From what they could tell me, none of that relates to the disease vectors. They don't spray when they get a West Nile. Um, West Nile, by the way, is largely a, a we've, the state has never treated for West Nile. Uh, it's for most folks, for every person who actually shows symptoms, there's 300 people who don't have symptoms. It's a relatively mild disease. Triple E is really the larger issue here. Um, Triple E has been a moving target. It used to be centered around the Hockamonk Swamp in Plymouth County, and that's where when we did the spraying when I was there, we did about 500,000 acres. They've yet to spray anywhere else. And typically the belief was that Triple E came on about a seven-year cycle. Uh, in the Hockamock. There's been some odd things happening though in probably the last 15 years where southern New Hampshire started to get triple E outbreaks. So West Nile, at my point, they don't spray for the, they don't spray with the surveillance. West Nile's kind of a mood issue. They surveil for it. It's elderly populations and, and immune compromised folks are at largest risk, but none of the spraying they target, ground spraying, larvicide, or anything else is really targeted to West Nile. So from my perspective, from a public health perspective, West Nile's not really on the table. It's really triple E. We've had a positive triple E horse, and nobody knows whether that horse moved or not and conquered. They've had another one out your way, Shelley, a little bit west of here, and they've had a positive triple E in Acton. Um, but I'm not sure it really warrants this kind of uh, uh, action. The control activities at this point are in no way, shape, or form related to the disease vectors. There's no evidence at all. There's no planning in it wait, to wait, reduce wait, it. No, let me sense. finish, Jen. No, no, but it doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. No, 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 explain. Because, because different mosquitoes so there's certain different there's certain varieties of mosquitoes that carry the disease. There's no special effort on their part to target those. The adulticiding, the water management, and the larviciding, they're general, they'll catch some of those, but they're not targeted at all to the disease vectors. Correct. So they catch all the mosquitoes then. No, I'm talking about the control, not the catch. Okay, what they do when they, when they catch the mosquitoes in the traps, they, uh, they identify them, they have a cold table, they put them on so they don't rot. They, uh, they uh, go through them, they ID the ones that are specific, the species that are particular vectors of the disease of interest, and they send those off to the state lab. But none of their control efforts, which is the bulk of this $45,000, is targeted towards those species. And in fact, the state doesn't target those until it hits the uh, triple E and the adult and the aerial spraying, which they've never done in this part of the state. So my, my point of view is this, that the control activities really, as the way they conduct them, have no relationship at all to diseases. They may have some benefit. We don't know. They don't target it towards that, towards disease vectors. The benefit, and I think it's minimal at this point in time, though I, I would like to uh, watch it, is minimal given what we've seen around the state, in which is, uh, and it's been moving a little bit. We've had spots here and there in surrounding towns, but not in my mind to warrant $45,000. Now, if we had the ability 
to split out and say we'd like to do surveillance and not the control, it would be a very small portion of that $45,000. I would vote for that. But I don't think it's worth $45,000 my, from my point of view for the limited public health benefit we, we see from this. What you just said is exactly the question I was going to ask because you and Ian clearly know a lot more about this than I do. <coughs> but my question was going to be, is it all or nothing? It's all or nothing, and that's part and of if the problem. We, if we could, is it non-negotiable? Has it never been, uh, you we know? We can ask, but it's, been not, it's negotiable in some county projects. So if you go up to Essex County, they'll, they'll break it out if you don't want adult deciding, which usually gets more people upset because they don't like the, because that's when they come by and spray your neighborhood and you are exposed to the chemical. I don't have a problem, but I, 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 I appreciate that some people do. So Essex County, they'll give a menu of things you can choose from. Uh, <coughs> Central Mass, it's their way of the highway, and it's the only way right now you can get, um, you can get any monitoring done for the, for the Triple E or West Nile. If we could spend five or ten thousand just for that, I would certainly recommend that. But we're stuck with a forty-five thousand dollar bill. With has that question ever been? I raised asked? it with Katie, and she agreed. She said that a lot of towns didn't become part of the surveillance because they don't either have the money or want to spend the money. Uh, but DPH seems unwilling uh, to 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 approach that. So none of the towns that that she said have questioned it have asked uh, about the uh, the amount of the the money that's being spent on control as opposed to surveillance. No. And if you talk to Tim, because I've had this discussion before I was on this board, he said, well, you got to pay in for it because what if we find it? We need that infrastructure there, which I'm not quite buying. Um, Tim's never sprayed for disease vector in his entire career here. It's always been in the southeast. Doesn't mean it can't pop up. It popped up in southern New Hampshire. So it's jumped us. Nobody quite understands why. It's a complex. They're not even sure how it quite over triple E over winters. They know it's birds. They suspect blackbirds. but. It, there's a lot of unknowns. Nobody knows, for instance, why it suddenly popped up in New Hampshire. So we're at some risk for this. I think it warrants surveillance. I don't think it warrants enough that we have to buy this whole package to get it. And I, I personally think it's something we should vote legislators to so we can buy just surveillance. Okay, so I have a couple questions. So when you talk about it doesn't do any good to do the control because they don't specify or target <coughs> certain species of mosquitoes, um, that doesn't make sense to me because um, different. there's a whole variety. It's like over 100 species of mosquitoes out there in our area of the 78. world. 78. And um, not all carry diseases. That's true. Most don't. So you don't know if you're killing, if they don't test every mosquito, you don't know if they are killing off positive mosquitoes. And we've got surrounding towns that have had, like you just said, Triple E, and there's been West Nile virus in surrounding towns. Yeah, but we've so never in, targeted so West Nile virus for spraying. In, 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 but that's okay. I, I'm just well, saying that- it begs the question that, is why that we do it. <laughs> we don't have to spray, but the larva siding, I'm, I think that's important because that keeps the mosquito populations down. My point is, so those larvae of those varieties, of varieties of mosquitoes that carry diseases, we know, for instance, like the West Nile virus, for instance, breeds in storm drains. It's well known to do that. Um, while they'll spray the catch, they'll do catch basins here, they won't do the storm drains. So there's not really a lot of targeted effort towards those. That's my point. What Central doesn't do is they look prob much more at the aggressive human biting mosquitoes and target those than they do the ones that might be a vector of the disease. So my point is, sure, we're going to catch some of the mosquitoes that are disease vectors, yeah. some of them aren't, but there's no targeted effort towards the disease vectors here. And they could argue, given our surveillance data, that there shouldn't be because we haven't seen a lot of that disease here. But any, any benefit we see from the control activity is accidental. It's not targeted or designed to control the disease vectors. Yeah, we don't have the option, by the way, of just doing larva siding. And we should if but we, we don't. want to. If there's a whole area, well, I think we should have the option of just doing surveillance, but we don't have that either. I agree with that. We what we get is one package that basically you got to do water management, adult siding, larva siding, and surveillance if you want any one of those. Other other projects, Essex being a good example, you have a menu, and you can pick just this wow. combination of those. Okay. Central doesn't do that. Okay, I understand. So, um, and so according to this. this <coughs> that in this packet they've done a 10-year survey or at least 10 years of data and there's been no virus identified correct with that said they have found spots in surrounding towns yes. west okay. nile i'm not as worried about when was when was the west nile found in Acton? 
I think it was last year. There's yeah. been there's been positive stuff in however Triple E and Acton. Now keep in recently. mind when they get West Nile, they don't spray. When they get Triple E, they watch for it to get to a certain level, and then they'll order a spray. Okay. You mean the town or CM, CM? The town doesn't do any spraying. Uh, yeah, yeah, the well, there's two entities. So the, 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 project, um, the, the project doesn't spray for disease vectors anyway. The only time the disease vector really comes in, they'll say they do, but it's, they really, I don't, there's no protocols, there's no public health record to do that. Where they spray is when it over, hits over a certain level and it's only Tripoli. The state's never sprayed for, for West Nile. If DPH looks at it and there's, it goes over a certain risk, they'll contract an aerial spray. Part of the issue with the ground sprays in best conditions, they're only going to get that spray will only infiltrate 300 feet on either side of the road. Um, gets windy, and there's you know two miles of woods behind it. The mosquitoes are just going to fill back in very quickly. Common conditions, you can probably get five days of control. Gets windy or storm, the mosquitoes are going to blow in, and you won't really have very good control. So it's the the methods they use, other than the avoidance, the larva siding, and the water management, are are largely nuisance. Mm -hmm. So we need to make a recommendation to the selectmen on this, whether we support this, support elements of it, have concerns. So, do you know? Do you have any questions? Thank you. Well, we just you have to pay for it, right? The town has to pay for it. It comes off the cherry sheet, so we yeah. can either buy into the project for forty-five thousand and yeah. get everything there, yeah. or not spend the forty-five thousand. But, but it's the selectmen's decision. They're just looking for a recommendation from yeah. us. But, we can recommend the selectment too, right? We can say, hey, we like to have a waiver. We're spending the money. Why don't we use the first phase? And if we don't like it, we go back on the package. Well, Why and don't we do that? The concern here is we do miss out on that surveillance, which I think is a minimal public health benefit, but that could change really quickly. Yeah, we got a bad year. A well, it moves. So it's, it's the Triple E is a moving target for, for managing. So, I mean, it was never in southern New Hampshire before, and about 10 years ago it popped up at levels enough where they had to do aerial applications. If we, we decide not to do it, and then we have problem, so then the town will say, well, the board didn't do their job. Well, I mean, we're Black making Hampshire, recommendations, Black and we Hampshire. can put as much detail in there for the selectors yeah. as we want. I, I, I suspect, and I'd be for this, if we had the option of choosing only surveillance, would most of us agree with that? I, like that. I agree with that, but Me too, I like uh, that. basically you said it would take a change in legislation, right? Not the legislation, it would take a change in project management. Well, and our legislation could force that as well. You know, I like being proactive as far as this whole program is concerned. Um, I, I agree with what you said. I, I prefer the surveillance part of it if it was offered that way. Uh, to just get rid of all of it, um, <coughs> I think I, my opinion would be to continue with it and set in motion some sort of a process where it can be broken down, where we can decide what level we want to go with. So if the board would like, I can draft a memo for approval at our next meeting that would suggest to the, lay this out for the selectmen, mm -hmm. let them know we support the surveillance, right. have some support for the, for the larva siding and, and water management, uh, but are concerned, in, but let them know that at this point in time, the public health benefit is limited to the surveillance, which is a small part of this. I would agree to that. Yep. Yep. So, um, so I'm happy yeah, to drop that memo for the board's approval at the next meeting. Yeah. Including control, correct? Including control when needed or con a stepped approach, correct? Where we have ongoing surveillance, if needed, we can get some control as needed. And so, and maybe some I'm I'm for some background larva siding if it's warranted from the surveillance. So here's the problem with surveillance: by the time you have you find it, because they only do surveillance in adult mosquitoes, it's too late for larva siding. Yeah. You've got an adult oh. population that can't be targeted. I, I went out with them, and we did larva siding in different areas of Littleton. Uh, you a few can years do ago. larva siding, and, no, and that's I mean, through. But we did larva. Catch, catchment, yes. Right, you can do that, we but it's unrelated catchment. to the disease. They only test, they, they catch the larva to identify them, but they don't, right. the disease isn't in the larvae. Right, correct. They pick the yes. disease up from yes. birds, so you can't do surveillance of the larvae. Mm. But, but I'm talking about just, what I mean, looking at the larvae and the amount of larvae, the abundance of larvae. Part of this program 
is not just disease reduction, right? It's comfort for the town, that we're not swarming in mosquitoes all summer. So I'm just saying that I would like, in addition to what you said, the surveillance step, I would also like some control going on for areas that have lots okay. of mosquitoes. I think we I can think put that forward, but I don't think that's a public health benefit. Nuisance benefit. It's a nuisance, it's a nuisance benefit. benefit, but that also kind of <clears throat> comes under what we do. Well, I guess the one. So I don't know. Th that's my idea. So why don't I draft something for the next meeting? I'll mm -hmm. give it to Shelley. She can send it around, and, and we can add to it as we see fit. Yeah. But from my perspective, the board really looks at this from a public health perspective, and and that's where we weigh in with the selectmen. And, and I, I and this is unfortunately true through most of the towns. There's very little discussion of this, short of East Middlesex, where it's all boards of health who sit on the board. All the member boards of health sit on that project's board. This one's made up of highway departments and mayors, and I don't think there's any more, there's maybe one board of health on this. Mm -hmm. um, so my feeling is I think we need to challenge them a little bit. I would like to see more of a menu approach. Mm -hmm. I agree with I the agree. menu I approach. agree with that. And, and until we raise it, it's not going to yeah. change. But I do like ongoing. I think that's important. So, Because nuisance can be a health issue, right, if yeah. you have someone that's allergic that has gets reactions. Now, typically, reactions to mosquitoes <coughs> are not severe severe but you know well you can have anaphylaxis but we don't spray for yellow jackets and well that's, true. that's very true yeah. Yeah. and that's okay. a much larger health yep. issue yep all right so we got mosquito control we get halloran um one other issue i wanted to raise for folks just to think about is we've had a number of issues come up where we've had some discussions and we've kind of had this policy that gets referenced but it's unwritten policy i'm not talking new regulations but i'll give the example of fast franks last time where we all agreed, except maybe Gino, I think, may have, that we look at um, tight tanks as a last resort, where there's no other option, only for existing. We don't have that in writing anything, and I think there might be some benefit having that writing. Um, you mean for in our town regs and the board? No, and just a policy statement. So folks coming into the board know what they're doing. Department yeah. of Public Health does this all the time. They've yeah. got, you know, the way it works, you've got statute, you've got law that give you the ability to write regulations, yep. and then you get some policy statements. So there's a few I'd actually, I, from my time on the board, I can think of, of a couple. Um, one is, you know, we've got these rooms in the basement. That I think we have one tonight where yep. it, it was done somewhere without a building permit. We don't know when. How do we approach those? What's our general approach? My family is, we should, okay, it's a deed restriction, but it's got to go to the building department to have an inspection because we want to make sure there's not going to be a fire, an electrical fire, or something like that. I think, um, I think we need one around some of these accessory use apartments under what conditions. And it doesn't mean we can't vary from it, but to generally lay out the guidelines. So for instance, if Fast Franks had something for us ahead of time and said, we generally do not allow uh, tight tanks except for existing facility when it's a last resort and there's no feasible alternative. That probably would have given them, the, you know, before they came in here, realized this might not be worth our time with the boards. Mm -hmm. um, because we all said it, and, but we all have that agreement. Let's put that out there so folks know what they're getting into. So if folks want to come with some ideas for next meeting and what they think are policy statements. We've had long-standing unwritten policy that you, you kind of buy into as a board member but is never written down. We should share those, I think, with the public. And I, I do think there's always going to be exceptions. It doesn't mean we're tied to them and we can state that, but we should, we should have that. Um, so I have a question. So yep. what would, in your mind, be the difference between a policy statement and the um, septic regs that we have drafted? So where do the septic regs say that we only allow these things as a last resort? Well, Title V says that. So it's kind of the same idea. The state says it. Why do we have except to reset? But except that we, we, have, have we have the ability right now to allow us tight tanks in a variety of situations. Well, well, we it's have been the authority our now. We have the authority. Right. But it's been our policy, even against that authority, to say, no, not unless there's, it's an okay. existing building and there's no other. So we have authority to say otherwise. We need to make clear how in our policy, how we're going to exert that authority and when. Okay, so my question then is, do you want it, and we want it in a reg, add to the regs, our no. septic regs? No. Or do we want to just no. have it as a list of general policies? No. I mean, if you go to the Food Protection Program at DPH, they've got a bunch of regs, but they also have policy statements and guidance on how they should do that, which allows some flexibility. It's not reg form, but it gives some people generally how it's approached. Okay. So we don't want it in the regs. We just want it separate. Then we're Kate creating a parallel track of, of regs? I don't think so. A, a companion document that says, look, you know, we have the authority to grant variances, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we're only going to grant it, we, our general belief is we're only going to grant it in these situations, our general approach. Doesn't mean somebody can't promote, you know, because there's always an unforeseen situation. So uh -huh. it's a policy statement. Okay. This is the first time mm -hmm. a tight tank <coughs> has mm -hmm. come up in discussion since I've been on the board mm -hmm. in regards to a food service 
Yeah, it's, it's always been the residents. Yeah, but even for so the residents, it's the same policy. I mean, I no, I can see doing what you're saying for residents, but um, I don't see the need to do it for a, a, a food establishment because there's already laws, bylaws there, or rules and regulations there to accommodate a permanent site or a mobile site. Yeah, but we did have and the to ability to introduce a tight tank. Is what purpose would it serve? I would agree, except that we do have the we could we have the authority if we had wanted to grant Frank, Frank yeah. Fast Frank's the ability to do a tight tank, we could have done that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was the right move. So I, I agree, the residence is probably a bigger issue, but we can discuss the gory details on this later. But for instance, oh. uh, you know, we could have approved Fast Frank's for a tight tank. Nothing prohibited us from doing that. We had the authority. None of us agreed it was a good idea. That's been kind of the. And maybe it doesn't. We don't have enough experience on food establishment to do policy, but mm -hmm. that's those are details I think we can discuss. So then we would be adding things to this policy statement as we go. Yeah, that's the idea to sort of get. Hopefully, we capture general. most of it in the beginning. But certainly, as new issues came up and we felt that we we established policy, I think this would make it clear. Mm -hmm. um, because I think most folks walking off the street, maybe you do, because you're in here all the time and hear us talking, have no clue that that we generally don't allow our policy, even though we have the authority to do it, we don't allow tight tanks unless there's a, no other option in its existing facility. And I agree, it's a bigger issue with residents. Anyway, think about ideas. We don't have to do it, but I think it's a good exercise to go to. Okay, we also have, uh, we have an appointment to make tonight. Um, we have a nomination of inspector of animals. Uh, this is different from the animal control officer. This is a state position where they do basically what they call barn books where annually they do a census of livestock in the state. It's appointed by the Director of Animal Health at the Department of Ag Resources, uh, but they're looking for nominations from the town. So we have a, no uh, a letter to uh, nominate Phyllis, uh, I'm sorry, what's the last? Phyllis Tower. Tower. Tower is the inspector of animals. Very often the animal inspector is the same as the animal control officer, um, but it's not always. So, But DAR appoints who they want, but they typically look to the police department or the Board of Health to appoint that person. And I used to appoint them at DAR, so that's <laughs> so. I don't know Phyllis. Are you Phyllis? <laughs> no, she's uh, she's I, I know her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're looking for us to uh, to make a nomination to the Department of Ag Resources, so they can appoint her as the animal inspector. Again, it's the barn books where it's it's essentially an, an annual census of livestock in town. And where that becomes relevant is if there's an outbreak of a particular animal disease. This goes to the Bureau of Animal Health picture, uh, I don't know, uh, bird flu, they have some idea where all the chickens are in town, you know, so they can go up and do that surveillance um, and control if necessary. What is Phyllis's uh, background or credentials for something like this? She's our animal control officer now. Is she? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. yeah. This one's basically walking onto a farm or somebody's girl. house and saying does it for other 20 towns. chickens. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think she can count. Yep. <laughs> nope. That, that's Those fine. Those are hard to count, trust me. <laughs> yeah, that's they true. move. <laughs> so I'm looking for a nomination. All right. I'll nominate her. Or, or motion to good. nominate. Make yes. a motion to nominate Phyllis Tower as the um, animal inspector for <coughs> And I second that then. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Pass it unanimously. The last kind of uh, administrative matter has to do with the stormwater regs. Uh, we talked about those last time. There was some question on how the authority was split between the highway department uh, and the Board of Health. As I read it, we both have the authority to take action against folks who are, have, you know, their dryer, their washer running out into the storm drain. Um, I, I think the drafter of the regs probably left it open, figuring we'd work it out with Jim ourselves, um, where, where we clearly have the authority because we have a board and a process. If there's an appeal, it would go to us. But either the highway department or we could take action largely which says stop it or here's the cost to fix it if you don't do it we will so uh, okay. but so either of us could do that I suspect we'd work that out with Jim uh, in the highway department uh, but the appeals is solely in the authority of the Board of Health is that how you read it some I guess how it how Art. I read it when mm -hmm. I read it is how is that some, most sump pumps are okay unless something in it has a bad smell, is, is, contains pollution, contains any kind of chemical, any detergent, anything so, like that. I read it a little bit differently where basically any discharge they're going to assume because we're not testing it. But it had to do with 
directly into the storm drain. So if you had a running out your front door and it was going into a storm drain, I mean, I've seen people put their, their washer hoses and their sump pump right into the storm drain. That wouldn't be kosher without a, without a permit. Um, if it's just going into your backyard and there's no direct connection, I'm not sure that would fall under this. Um, yeah, it was. It depended what was in the liquid, but we can yeah, talk but, about that later. But we're never going to know what that is unless we test it. But if someone complains test. about it, is what I'm saying, it becomes an issue if if that's something that you would address. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Backyard. So basically, the board, <laughs> the board of selectmen are just looking for whether the board supports these articles. They're on town meeting. The brochure is going out to all residents, so they're just looking for whether you support it or don't. Okay. Support do it. we need a motion? We need for a motion that? for the board. I'll make to a support. motion to support. The new bylaws. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, board member reports? Uh, uh, I don't know there is, but go ahead, Bill. I just want to bring something up that uh, <coughs> isn't really a report, but I'm going to pass these pictures around relative to the address at the top of the pictures. And without mentioning any names or addresses, I would like everybody to look at these pictures. And I was wondering if the chair could give us an update on what is happening with the AG's office on this. Mm -hmm. So this has to do with the Taylor Street property. Um, I can give an update, not much more than that. <clears throat> Essentially what happened is, you know, we basically, the AG worked uh, to take this to the, I mean, to take this to housing court to essentially put this property into receivership. Um, during the process, they had a different assistant. They switched assistant DAs, uh, dist, uh, dist, not just the attorney, uh, attorney generals. Uh, when they went to court, there was a question on to who actually owned it between the gentleman we all know uh, and I believe two banks, and it was not clear, so the judge sent them back. As mm -hmm. You spoke to Roland. Is that your understanding? Yep. So my understanding is the AG is trying to discern that to go back to court and still move forward with basically trying to find a receiver for this property. So, so we're stuck in a bureaucratic circle. Yeah, and which uh, is where we've been for 20 years. So, yeah. a follow-up <laughs> question on that. Uh, way back in uh, meeting on. So we voted to put a fence on it. Well, I proposed the motion, and uh, the minutes of the meeting was 728.15 to uh, have a fence put around the property, and I was just wondering where the, that stands with town council. I did send a letter to town council asking if they had done that, and I haven't received a response yet. So my, my suspicion is we need to know who to send the letter to and we're kind of in the same boat as the AG, uh, the AG and the housing court was. It's not clear who the proper owner of this is. So my suggestion is Roland has to go to court with the AG on this one. As soon as we know who it is, regardless of where we go as far as the receivership, uh, once we know who the legal owner is, then we forward that letter to them as we voted on previously. So um, that they that they secure this, this site. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm confused by the fact that nobody can figure out who owns the property, but that's neither here nor there. Apparently I got my people. answers. Thank you. Yeah. A, a, a judge apparently couldn't figure that one out either. So, the um, judge probably isn't happy that it went to court without the parties knowing who owned the property. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think Roland and Jim are too happy about being dragged in there all morning either without knowing who it is. But um, to be fair, they did switch AGs. Do we have the name of the new AG? I do on the email. Yeah. You shoot it to me and I'll follow up with her and let her know there's a bunch of stuff writing on this. Um, I don't believe we have minutes or do we? Yeah. Oh, we do. We have meeting notes from, uh, nope, never mind, we don't. Do we? No. Nope. Okay. So uh, I have a, sorry, I have a board member report, but it will take a couple minutes because it's reviewing a, a letter for a um, closed pod regarding the EDS. And I want to explain that to everybody. Okay. So if you want to go ahead with the. Why don't we move ahead since we have folks sitting yeah, here waiting. Do that um, a little bit. So we're about 15 minutes late. I apologize. So I'd like to open the hearing for 17 Roxbury Drive, Marking Associates. Um, your clients or neighbors, whoever, are welcome to come up to the front. It's a small group, so we take advantage of that. So, Jonathan, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. 
name is Jonathan Markey from Markey Lubin. Um, I was contracted to do a uh, septic design for 17 Roxbury Drive. Uh, it's an existing single family residence uh, that has a failed septic system out back. We did, a, um, we did some soil testing. The soil tests were relatively slow. Um, yeah, 60 minutes in it. Um, so with that, the size of the system needs to be fairly large. And with the size of the system and the distance to groundwater, which was relatively high, at Uh, we need a uh, number of variances to be able to construct the system. Uh, so we have a, uh, we designed a system out back. Uh, we're going to be putting in a <coughs> single combination uh, septic tank slash pump chamber, which will lift the F1 up to the field. We'll go through a gravity field. Um, and there are retaining walls all the way around the entire system. The retaining walls um, vary from three feet in height. The flow is this way. This okay. way. Yeah. So this is Roxbury, and uh, that's whatever other uh, street yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, Long Lake. Long Lake yeah. is up here. And that's uh, out to Gold Street. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the grade comes down this way. The only place that we could fit the system is out back, um, which is the highest point of the lot, unfortunately. Um, it's just because of where the house sits. Right. Um, so we, we do have a proposed wall going around all four corners of the, of the system. Um, the height of the wall at the rear property line is three feet at the two corners, and it gradually goes up because the bed is level and the, the ground slopes down. The height of the wall at these two corners is four and a half feet at this corner and five feet at this corner. Um, unfortunately, um, okay, so okay, so um, yeah, no, I, I had to review the variances. So the way that variances work is in Title V, you have a list that you start at the top and you go down and you have to hit them one by one. You're allowed to skip if that variance doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. But you're not allowed to just skip and say, I want a groundwater offset reduction. So there's a certain thing. They say property line variance first. They say offset to foundation second. They say. So you're not allowed to just start grabbing whatever the hell you want for, for variances. So with this with this uh, system, because of the 60 million inch park, I can't fit a whole compliant system in. Yeah, I have to reduce the size of it. The second that you reduce the size, it takes the groundwater offset off the table. It's no longer available to you. You can't double dip. It's either size or offset to groundwater. So for this design, we chose size. So unfortunately, the wall height is the wall height. I can't do anything about it. It's, I'm, I'm stuck with it. So, um, so there are a number of variances, uh, both locally and in Title V, that are required. I'll go through them. Uh, so the Title V variances are property line offset. Uh, Reduction from the required 10 foot to 6 foot for the septic tank is required. The cellar wall setback, reduction from the required 10 feet to 5 feet for the septic tank. Cellar wall setback for the field, 15. Uh, so from 20 feet reduced down to 15 feet offset. And a reduction in system size. We're asking for just a 25% reduction in system size. Which um, takes the offset because it seems part of the issue here is you're going to have four foot retaining walls. Yeah. We're just going to need a ZBA yeah. variance yeah. as well. Yeah. So anything we approve tonight is going to be subject to the ZBA. Yeah. And you're going to put a tight tank? No. It's a, it's a, it's a full system. That would be the other option. Um, yeah, but we can, we can fit something that, that will work. So 
Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm just wondering, maybe it doesn't matter if I know or not, but I'm just wondering how, how does that work? How does this wall keep everything in? Like, is it just concrete? Is there something that helps keep the everything blocks, in? The big blocks, the big blocks. Well, what's the There's any liquid from reaching under our property? So the reason they're raising it up is essentially because the groundwater is so high. Because he's making a smaller system, sometimes we'll let it go a little bit closer to that. But because it's a smaller system, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got to raise it up. Right, right, So right. it's partially to contain it, but a lot of it's just to make sure you have enough soil in between there to filter and hold it. Is that yeah. Awesome? So the, the wall is backed with a 40 mil poly barrier. Um, 40 okay. mil is, it's, that's, that can, yeah, it stands up on its own. Right, right. Um, and it's strong enough where even, we do back the wall up with uh, with gravel to okay. kind of cushion that right, that right, pad, right. but even when that barrier is in contact with the concrete, it still won't rip it. It's right, like right. that. It's, that. it's like it. plastic. Yeah. But there are seams in there, right? It's not a soft. Yeah. Thing. So the seams have uh, they overlap and they get um, <clears throat> double backed. Um, it's like bitch of bean tape. Mm -hmm. So they it gets impervious even at the seam. Right. That barrier goes all the way from the top of the wall it goes down into the sea layer of soil so you know when you dig a hole it's like it's like black at the top it's yeah. like orange yeah. and then it gets into that whitish stuff yeah. it goes all the way into the whitish stuff so so nothing will weep out of the out of the sides of the, the side the, of the of the wall okay. it goes straight down into the ground gotcha. that, that was a concern yeah. Yeah. Um, so in addition to the Title V variances, the local variances that we're requiring are the, um, the wall itself, um, Regulation 27, fill, fill to property line. We're putting a wall right, uh, you know, a foot off the property line. And um, we're also requesting, I, I've requested this before, uh, using the use of the two compartment tank, the, your local regs require a two-compartment tank to be used as a two-compartment tank. This comes in, it flows over into the second one. We're using a two-compartment tank as a single-compartment septic tank and a pump chamber on the other side. So it's not actually a two-compartment tank being used as a two-compartment tank. It's being used as a 1,000-gallon, 1,500-gallon septic tank and a 500-gallon pump chamber all in one unit. Um, so that, that's something that we've requested in the past when there is no room to put it And that's else. a size thing. Or that's, that's an, a size thing, right? You want to go that route as opposed to it's a larger a, It's tank. a space. It's a space thing. Right. Right. We, we, we need another tank. Yeah. And we're right. already right. requesting right. variances for property line and foundation for the single tank. So we need. Yeah. Sure. How many bedroom are you going to put in there? It's, uh, it's a proposed two bedroom so system. There's only for one bedroom. The systems were two bedrooms. How many in the house? There were two bedrooms in the house now. Um, the I existing know. system was a one bedroom system. According to right? it's, a, it's now a two bedroom house. Yes. So that's why they want the bigger. And that's why a well, they are the not, Yes, you, you're not allowed by Title V <coughs> to design a one a bedroom one system. Right. It's the, the minimum design is a two bedroom design. Um, so with that, um, you know, it, it is a two-bedroom design. It's a so the original uh, board of health permit indicated it was a one-bedroom dwelling. Yeah. So the, the argument there is still I, I can't do a one-bedroom. Right. No, I'm not saying you should. I mean, so, we have yeah, the biggest system we can. Like, you know, but but, yeah. but with the with the effort and the expense and the and the upgrade of the system to be more compliant with the, the regulations, regulations and, and everything. You know, we shouldn't be. So here's what Jim said. With the, the so research. the original Board of Health permit indicates the house is a one bedroom dwelling. The approved capacity of the facility is determined by this permit according to Title V. The proposed system is for two bedrooms. The design is not in full compliance with Title V and the regulations. The code would require the house to remain a one bedroom dwelling. So that's something the board needs to cons consider as we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, the system is 25% smaller than what it should be for a right. two-bedroom. Yeah, that's, that's... You can't put in a fully compliant 
two bedroom system, correct? So translate that into outflow. 220 is gallons per day is for two bedrooms. Yep. What's the outflow your design is allowed, is designed to handle? Oh, with the 25% reduction? Yeah, is it just strictly 25% off? Yeah, like 150? Linear yeah. Okay, great. Right. Whose house is it? Who's so you I don't know. Oh, you want it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all no story. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, is that when the, uh, the house was built and designed, almost every, all of them had one bedroom. Because right. That's they didn't have any walls and stuff. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> under, under new construction, there was, there was a you couple can't of people living there bedrooms. for a long period of time. But to keep the code, yeah. I'm you keeping have to stay on the show. Yeah. Oh, I don't that. <laughs> so Peter, what do you, you're going to sell this, I assume, at some point? I'm I'm hoping to have John, my son, with that. That's okay. I'm, I'm presently, I don't intend to sell it. That's why I'm looking okay. at it right now. So and you're looking at it as a one or a two bedroom? It's a two bedroom. Yes. And I believe it, 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 the family has been raised in it. You know, there was, there was three, uh, a father and two daughters living there forever, and. I'm pretty sure they all sleep in one room, so it's been used as a two bedroom all along. Yeah, it is. Grants on them. Yeah, so even though they will attest right. to that. But what, what we'll go in will be very, very nice. It'll be very pretty. And okay. You're going to come right along the property line here. Is it Duke down how far? Uh, it's two and a half feet that we take straight down. Two and a half feet down? Yeah. All along the property line here. Yeah. So well, um, the wall is going to come up four feet? Yeah. There's a garage there. Well, five feet in our corner. When you dig this, um, we, we have trees right along the property line here. 50 foot, 50 foot everywhere is right along the yeah, property Yeah, about, about 50, maybe 40. So you're going to lift the roots up of those trees on this side. Um, so now, if a stiff wind comes along, the tree's going toward my house. I'm going to suppose that. Well, yeah, no, because the roots are gone here, so there's nothing the, to hold it on that side. And the, and the, the, and the one thing with that, too, is that it does come from the pond side. The prevailing wind comes from the pond across. John, you're building the system up, correct? Yeah, but the footing for the wall goes down two and a half feet. Okay. Right. To put the wall in. Put the gravel there. And then That'll wipe out all up the bulk of the root system <coughs> of the pine trees on that yeah, side. Yeah, at least 50 feet tall, too. And if they come down, they'll wipe out my house. How many trees are there? There's, There's three, three, three big ones and one small one, I think. Yeah. Three, three main, main really tall if, ones. Um, Again, it would depend on how far the roots come this way or the other way. Yeah. Uh, if I can transplant them further over onto your property, would you be? No, you're not transplanting them this way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can spade, uh, either that or would you like for me to plant you some some other trees that you're, you're well, happy with if at a certain height? We'd be happy if you took them down. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we done. can work with that. <laughs> we can work with that. I'm just more okay. concerned yeah. about you know, what can happen. That's a good point. We can put yeah. something no, else there, but I so Peter, you're going to take the trees down. You don't mind doing having the trees down. Take it down. Okay. Well, I I don't want to have them right, there right, with right. half of the roots gone, and mm -hmm. then he won't take care of them. Then lose my house. <laughs> <laughs> or potentially new wall in minutes. White pines aren't too strong even with the boots in, so it's probably not a bad deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can plant something else there, you know, a little further away. We can plant sure. something else. Yeah. Well, yeah. you could plant it up against the wall as well, something a little thicker like an arborvitae or something. Yeah. So yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Seems so fair. So is that, yeah. you guys comfortable with that? I'm actually comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's still some. I have actually never met him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's really tall. I can understand. Yeah. Sure. He's on the planning board, so he can't he can't screw you over on this. I'm high on the house. My son-in-law and daughter live in. Okay, that's the reasonable request. I think that's a point well made. I hadn't heard that before, but it makes sense. You take out half the roots; it's going to lean. It's <laughs> so it is. It's, it's dependent on the type of evergreen. White some pine, evergreens right? have a tap root, and that's the main root. They do have things that offshoot, but they're not. Yeah. Not, so I, I mean, I'm not a tree person, big, but but so you know what they are? it's probably less of an issue. White pines in Norway. 
Yeah, it doesn't make chicken. Are they fur? It's an evergreen of some kind. Yeah, but it might be a fur. Here, and that's fine. Yeah, give them a fur. I don't think that's a very deep Yeah, Yeah, that's my suspicion. I don't. Anyway, sounds like we have something that everybody's in agreement on. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an arborist, and I don't have a problem with the trees if you're in agreement with Peter. I'm having a problem with the fact that it's going from a one bedroom to a two bedroom and the system is not fully compliant it's reduced by 25 percent and those issues are more of a board of health issue than the trees but that being said peter's not going to talk to me forever <laughs> and uh but that's you know i have to say i'm i'm not in favor of it being a two bedroom with a system that's 25% smaller than, than uh, fully compliant under the conditions that exist on that lot. Okay, can I pose a request? Um, it seems we're getting hung up on the, on the number of bedrooms. Can we go through the variances and leave the bedroom alone for count alone and then continue the hearing? You mean leave it as a one bedroom? No, leave that discussion for oh. we'll continue to another hearing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't follow you in terms of well, enforcement. Okay, I don't want to come back. <laughs> if, well, if, <laughs> if, if you want to come back with his attorney, but I don't want to come back and waste my time for something that really doesn't have anything to do with me. What has to do with me is the variances. So the and we could work through those, and you could vote on those tonight, and then deal with the number of bedrooms with the client and his attorney. But I, I, it really has nothing to do with me, the, the number of bedrooms on the permit. It really doesn't. So let me, let me make an alternative that we approve the variances under the auspices of it being a one bedroom, but that Peter can come back with his attorney, yes. and we can revisit that. <coughs> that's not our decision. If he wants to do that, that's up to him. Oh, Peter, well, I thanks. intend to come back regardless because the way I look at it for what the 55-gallon uh, drum they had there for the last 80 years since 1962, which is nothing more than a little handwritten note in the Board of Health over in the Shovel Board of Health saying it's a one-bedroom, though it's raised uh, you know, a father and a mother and, and at least two children that they know of, and then just recently a father and, and a grandfather and a child living in it which is obviously two bedrooms. It, it operated as a two bedroom for the last 40 years. To turn around and diminish what I am now putting in a giant system compared to the 55 gallon drum it was, I'm improving it tremendously and helping the neighbors as far as the affluent running down into the ground as it is now. So <clears throat> with that said, I can understand your reasoning, but a 25% reduction as opposed to what it was is is a hundred percent, two hundred percent better than what it is now. But uh, and that's how I look at it. But I will be back. I mean, Justifiably I, so. <laughs> well, it, it, I think it's well within your pur purview to uh, uh, approve a two bedroom system for it for the size of it and the condition. Neighbors like me so far. My comment to that would be, uh, uh, That's important. what's to stop anybody from coming to the board and saying, listen, I'm putting in a three-bedroom system, but it's, gonna, it's not fully compliant. It's 25% less for this reason, this reason, and this reason. Uh, I think that if, if we do that, we're just creating more problems down the road, and the, the conditions on this lot are very extreme. Oh. So, much, so much more extreme than what was approved for over on some other. Let me ask this. I mean, uh, realistically, Peter could come tell it's a one bedroom. Build us. We've talked about this before. We're not and he bedroom, could build please. a four bedroom house. Well, I think it's more likely to put a two. Yeah. <laughs> Is there something we could do that would maybe mitigate the concerns that it's 25% less? I mean, what we've done before, I think, is we've said you pump it annually or put something with records to be submitted and something along it's those lines. Because I'd rather see a two-bedroom on something that's 25% less or really an eighth less of the total, right, uh, and have it pumped annually than somebody who's got a two-bedroom on a two-bedroom system doesn't pump it every 15 years. So, I mean, we, there are provisions we can put in place that I, I agree don't fully address the legal issues but do addre help address some of the concerns that the system will fail. Who monitors it if you 
say it has to be pumped annually? They have to I bring a slip to the, uh, to the office. Mm. Ah, okay. Well, now, whether that continues when, when Shelley retires to the Caribbean or not is another matter, but... <laughs> yeah, Shelley's going to the Caribbean. Then they have to bring it to the Caribbean. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, can you do a straw poll to see how the, the board feels about just the way it comes upon presently? Because that's the only thing I can think of to mitigate, yeah. and it doesn't completely address, I agree, Bill, to help mitigate some of the concerns with a, a system that falls short of what the bedrooms are likely to be, let's be frank. Well, I... Again, my, my issue is you must have that little yellow piece of paper here, right? What it said at the Board of Health. Yep. You know, a one-bedroom design with a chicken scratch and no design, no nothing. Right. There's nothing. And realistically, a 55-gallon drum in the ground. Mm -hmm. well, realistically, we don't know, know what that's been doing a long way. And there's, Title there's, Five's <laughs> come a long way in 60, 70 years. <laughs> right. long, so long, long I, I get your point, but at, at the same point, we don't know what it's been polluting. I mean, Long Lake's been a mess. Well, in now we're going to make it right. Right. So Better. Awesome. Agreed it's an improvement. Um, so straw poll, would folks feel comfortable with this as a two-bedroom with a provision that it be pumped annually or 15 months, whatever. Somebody. 15 months minimum. Okay. I think there's a lot of Title V variances, a lot. And I know it's a small lot. And I know that this is a very challenging situation. But I think I would be okay. I would be okay if it had a deed restriction to it. What would the deed restriction say? Well, that it would be considered a one bedroom. So I have a question. How's it divided up now? The house? Yeah. Are there two bedrooms? Yes. There's, a, there's, a, there's one room in the back. There's a bathroom over here. Then there's another room over here. There's, a, there's actually another. Well, have you How many rooms total, Peter? How many rooms total? Five? Don't count the bathrooms. Bathrooms don't count. Five. Five now, not counting the bedroom. There's a bathroom and a kitchen. There's a bedroom in the back. There's a bedroom in the center. There's a living room type area in the very front. There's a kitchen, and then there's an addition off to the side that's probably 14 by 14. So you have a living room, dining room, kitchen, and two bedrooms. Correct. So realistically, we're never going to stop anybody from using this as a two bedroom, even if we say it's a one bedroom. I, as a straw poll, I would rather see a pumping restriction on there to help ensure that be, it's a site condition, there's nothing anybody could anticipate here. I'd rather have them submit a, slump, uh, a, a pump slip annually and be realistic about it, that even if we tell Peter it's one bedroom, even if we put in the deed it's one bedroom, somebody's going to move in there and we're not the bedroom police, we're never going to know that somebody's using it. I want to build something that is, it, it's a two bedroom and that's all it's ever going to be. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to there will be an open floor plan. <coughs> it's going to be very nice. Yeah. It's going to be. So, Bill and I understand your concerns, and I know exactly where you're coming from. And I don't disagree with them. But when I step into the real world, it's going to be used as a two bedroom, no matter what we say here. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you a question, Peter. Um, what is the bedroom, the, the room off to the side that was built? You said there was a, a living room, a dining room, two bedrooms. What was off to the side? You said there was a room off to the side. I don't know if they, they probably use that as the be, as a bedroom for the girl, more than likely. It's so finished with heat. So that's a third yeah, bedroom? It's, it's all, it's all, it's all one big, right? That's the one that's so that's a third bedroom. House. So absent, absent bathrooms, you have five rooms. No, no, not in the back. Well, then it's six bedrooms. I forgot about there. There's, there's, there's another room. There's, there's another six room. rooms, not five. There's a side room. room. Okay. So I'll be the one closest to the driveway on your side, the side that butts out. It was over has a number of windows in it. Oh, John yeah. was a hoarder. He just had stuff stored in there. All right. Well, then. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but it's, it's another a, room. It's another yeah, room. Bigger, the bed, so you've got six, room. six rooms. The laundry room is uh, probably six by eight or something like that, or maybe more. Not big enough. It's not big enough to qualify as a bedroom, no. so we have five You use it for the utility. And I'd be no, fine with the deed restriction on too. But they have they have another you have another room off to the side you said someone put storage in is that the laundry room you're talking to or that's no, another room that's one of the five rooms that's one of the five one of the five okay yeah All so right. we have five rooms in a laundry room and six by eight right two we can definitely confirm have been used as bedrooms for years okay years so again Bill okay. and I perfectly understand your point but again when I step into the real world we can call it a one bedroom it's not ever going to stop it from being a two bedroom. Practically, I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with the fact that the system isn't fully 
you know, it's not a full, because 22, <coughs> 220 gallons per day. Which I think I mean, we have to agree, small. one is an overestimate. But the, the only thing I can think of to mitigate this is to requ require that it be pumped annually, which will help ensure the system, even though it's smaller than is recommended, we're putting additional requirements on there to make up for that to ensure it doesn't go into failure. Right. Can I get a clarification? Um, <coughs> that 220 flow rate, is that um, our is that Littleton's? That's Title V. That, that's that's Title, Title, Title V. It's, that's it's not Mark on 10. top of Title V. No, nope, it's okay. 110 that's gallons yeah. per bedroom. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to know if we were, if Littleton had a flow rate no. above Title V or restriction above Title V. No, that's a good question. No. Um, no. So I, 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 I would agree uh, in the straw poll of, of approving it. But obviously, the um, ZBA has to look at the, the, the wall. But, but with the stipulation or requirement of annual pumping and proof of annual pumping. I, we've had a couple of these that we've brought into that seems to be consistent to me. Um, the question I have on this and the other one is how do we enforce that or how right, it's, we're just going to have to figure out how to. It's the other system. It's, yeah. It's well, not, or not really figure out how to set up a follow up. Or the challenge is it's going to take some staff time and it's going yeah. to take continuity. I mean, he can bring in a slip from Rada, whoever, you know, annually, and show, now whether Shelly's going to remember that or, 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 or comes in after she goes to the Caribbean, you know, <laughs> that's another question. She's going to the Caribbean tomorrow. And, and Facebook tells <laughs> me when my kid's birthday this. is. I'm sure you can have yeah. Yeah. Do notices so get happen. sent out to people that have to have the systems pumped on an annual basis? The they way they should. Do they? They don't. No. They don't. We haven't had. We haven't had any of these well, conditional. So, my suggestion is we have. We have. Deep restrictions of two bedroom with annual pumping. So one yeah. Recent. Yeah. We've, we've if in fact it isn't pumped annually. It's really on the owner, not the board. So it's the owner system. Well, well, it's there's no penalty. There's no fine. There's there's no consequence if it's not done. You can make fines. You can say if you don't. Pump no, it we annually. can, but we don't have them in place now. Correct. Right. So. That's well, here, a, here's an idea. Here's a thought. For over 55 buildings that are built for over 55 use, they allow 150, 150 gallons per day for a two bedroom. Now you're going to reduce it from two, 220 or whatever it is down to what 175. So that's even a little bit more than what you know Title V allows for two people. You know for a two bedroom in a over 55 deed restriction property. You know so. So what's your suggestion? Oh, I'm, I'm just saying that it it would even it. it some right yeah. So, I mean, we've already got, I mean, the state recognizes where we need an incentive, there's some flexibility in that system. Right. Because you know, I don't think yeah. old people poop less than the rest of us. Right. I, 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 think that, I, I think you No, on that. they just take longer to get to the bathroom. <laughs> <They're there longer. laughs> and that's sort of what I was they getting at. Because they're going to clean up more. <laughs> that was sort of what I was getting yeah, at. Yeah, so. The 220 flow rate. Right, like that there's so a here. But really, the risk is here. Yeah, I mean, and we've got this to it's play It's just like any other risk assessment. You right. overestimate the volume that people are going to use. There's a small yeah. percentage will use more of it, probably your daughter. You know, but most yeah. of us are probably considerably under 220, right? Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you're, I, I you're over 150, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe over, what, yeah. 175, 180? So if we had old people. I got to make you work, Jonathan. Come in here. I got to make you work something. That's 55. Right. So yeah, it's up to 55. <laughs> okay. So on that straw poll, Gino, basically, where do you stand on this? We okay with the annual pumping? If he, I know he, he never lie. He will not lie because he's an yeah, Nobody's he's calling lie. anybody a liar, Gino. <laughs> it's it's not a lie issue. It's basically, do we approve it as a two bedroom yeah. when, in fact, the system is doesn't quite up to our standards for a two bedroom. I know, now, as a new one, I'd never approve it, but it's right. existing. Reality is reality. It's, it's been an existing bedroom. one bedroom. Yeah, but the question By is some old paper, but in practice, it's got all the rooms it's ever had for a two bedroom. It's been used as a two bedroom. The neighbors have been in there, they say. <coughs> they <coughs> they really again, real world, it's a two bedroom. On paper, it's a one bedroom. <coughs> 
I think we need to be realistic in looking at this. I understand. We have the point to be though. realistic with the ground conditions, the water table, and all the variances that go along with it. It is, it is not a two bedroom compliant system. You cannot put a two bedroom compliant system on the lot. Agreed. That's why we're here looking at all these variances because right. you can't put it on there. The reality is we have a two bedroom house there. We can pretend it's one bedroom because an old piece of paper someplace, or we can say, we got an existing thing, it's going to be used as a bedroom, new two bedroom, no matter what we say, what things can we put in there to mitigate the fact that the system doesn't meet the standards for the usual standards for a two bedroom. And John, he's going for 55 gallon. Give me a break. Yeah, I, I, I did you try, right? You well, tried to and, and Jim yourself. says the all, only alternative is a tight tank. We don't like tight I mean, tanks. Is there <laughs> we just talked about <laughs> With all these exceptions being made around the Long Lake area, and uh, I've worked over in that area pouring concrete, and I've worked in gray water from the house next door, and it's just getting worse and worse. And I think if we continue down this road, even though the system is better than what was there, it's not going to end up good. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. That's my opinion. And if a fully compliant two-bedroom system could be designed to accommodate that lot, I wouldn't have any problem with it whatsoever. But I'm afraid that other people are going to come in here looking for a three-bedroom permit with a 25% reduction, and it's just going to keep going on and on and on. Bill, I do understand your perspective. He's going to go. He's going to go to the CBA for that. For the wall, you talking about the wall? Yeah, but I mean, if you make the wall higher, does that give you more capacity? Mm-hmm. Let's see what he can. No, no. 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 moving up doesn't make it any. Yeah, no. make it any bigger. I need it. I need it to be. He needs area not volume wider. It's what a six thousand square foot lot. Yeah, for the leach field. Such a tiny lot. So here's where I think we are. Unless there's any further discussion, we know what the variances are. We know what for people's perspectives are, um, straw poll or not. Unless there's further discussion. One, one more I'm question. Sorry, go ahead. This, this I don't mean to cut yeah, anything off. So, when was the original permit? 1961. I believe. Before some of us on this board were even born. <laughs> I have Come on, we're boring, but we're not that boring. Come on, come on. <laughs> you look like you're crying when you're so bored. <laughs> so, educate me on a tight tank. That I'm not familiar with that. So the, the only I know there's op that's an option. I'm not saying that's a good option, but what is it? It's no, not an option it's, because it's not an option a system can be designed so DEP will want that system over a tight tank. So if we set a tight tank, which we have our authority to do, Peter would then appeal to, uh, to DEP because he doesn't want to do a tight tank and pump right. it out. DEP would sign with, side with Peter. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have to go through any... I, I, I'm more than happy with signing a, a, a two-bedroom with the restriction, having the, the, the pumped you know, once every 14 months or, or t I do it every, every every June or July or something. Actually, pr I try to do it before the windows are open. That's what I try and do. He's smart. <laughs> so I try, and do, I try and do it in March and April. That's when I do my own house. Yep. So, and I do, I do mine every two years. And I have a seven bedroom house. So, and I never had a problem with it in 20 years. I think what I'm doing is actually improving the, the, the disbursement of, of, of fluid into the ground. So, I will. That's what. I, that's my proposal to you. And just leave it up to you. Five. Presently. So, just to clarify, 
Jim says the only alternative is a tight tank. I recognize that Peter doesn't want to do that. And then DEP would say, no, we don't want you to do it either, and he comes back. That's fine. But it is an alternative. What, what, no, what it's saying, not. Not for a one bedroom. Right. You, you're paraphrasing what he's saying, though. The alternative to not granting the variances would be right. a tight tank. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't to, trying to paraphrase. Right. I was just being brief. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so Jim says either one but bedroom. But you're, as, yeah. as the board, um, how, how can I kind of put this diplomatically? Just as, you're as, here as, weekly, don't health, be diplomatic. <laughs> as, as public health is of the utmost concern, also as land value to the owner. So there are stipulations in Title V which says that you can make variances based upon the price of the system. It's one of the last resorts but it does say that there is public health and there is homeowner value. Economic concerns. Right. So by, by not granting these variances, DEP would overturn that and say, no, you're not putting a tight tank in. You're going to put in a, a, a system that requires variances. Well, even from a one bedroom, perspective, a tight tank would for require one bedroom. frequent emptying. And well, for one bedroom, because it cannot yeah. support a two-bedroom two -bedroom. system. Right. If I made over 55, would you be happy with that? You know, you get 150 gallons. You see, it, it's you, you kind of you're beating a dead horse in some respects. I think, and you choose this one, this point in time, to, to all of a sudden be the the cleaner of, of of Long Lake. And I do know there's some systems up there that have been recently approved that. I don't know how the hell you got how, how that passed, but they did. And, you were, and, and you're in favor of that. I don't care if you don't build another house in Littleton as long as this place stays it stays around. Don't care. All right. I, I think we're getting off track here. Yeah. I think yeah. we, we have the information in front of us. I would ask for a motion one way or the other on this from somebody so we can take a vote. I don't think there's there's not a lot else to discuss on this if you want my opinion. I would like to make a motion that the permitting be granted for the variances for a deed restriction for a one-bedroom house based on the fact that a fully compliant system for a two-bedroom house cannot be put on the lot. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No. You know? No. No. Motion okay. does not carry. Do we have an alternative motion? John? So I'd like the motion that uh, where is it? Where's the information? That is one four sixteen. Uh, that the plans dated one four sixteen. I'm sorry, three eleven sixteen. Oh 16. no, it's three eleven sixteen. Um, brought before us that requires for seventeen Roxbury Drive the following uh, Title Five variances of five zero four zero five one that the property setback be reduced from ten to six. 504051B, seller wall setback reduced from 10 to 5. 4051B, reduction of the seller wall setback from 20 to 15 for the leaching field. Previous one was for the septic tank, this for the leaching field. And 4051C, a 25 reduction in the system size of uh, the leaching area is 25% is requested from this. Local res uh, regulation variance is requested again. Regulation 27, the fill requirements uh, that state that no portion of the fill requirement for sewer disposal systems be within 10 foot of the property line. That request is, to re is uh, construction of a retaining wall within two feet of the line uh, for system breakout grading, a butter notification required. Regulation 29, that a two compartment tank outlet fit filter require a two compartment tank Although a two-compartment tank is proposed, the second <coughs> compartment really is a pump chamber due to the lack of uh, available area on the site. Um, further, uh, we give conditional approval that that a annual uh, pumping of this tank be performed, or this system be performed, and that evidence of that is retained within um, the office. And that, of course, all this is um, contingent on approval of the ZBA because of the height of the wall. 
Have a second. You have to say everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Nay. No. Okay. So, for the record, I do understand your perspective, Bill and Ann. Um, Could I? I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Uh, this should be done with uh, the uh, stipulation that the ZBA approves the law. He did. He said that. That was All right. condition. I was reading. I apologize. Um, it also needs to be what you're calling the number of bedrooms because I Jim apologize. did not fill that in on the phone. Okay, and we should clarify this is a two-bedroom system. That this is a two-bedroom system. Okay. Is that for the existing house or all houses that are on this lot? What's that? Is that for the existing house or any house that's on this lot? Do you want to make that an existing house or any house? I, 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 I certainly don't think we should be putting any more bedrooms on this house. Right, I think it's the existing house. Right. Okay. For the record, Bill and Ann, I understand your perspective. This is why we have a board and we go with consensus vote. I do understand it. Um, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Right. And he never came back to the board again. <laughs> <laughs> he only wish. He only wish. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. I will be back in two weeks. Oh, do you have any deep holes in the area? Thank you. Very much. You doing any deep holes? Oh, you think this is going to just... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We'll I put know. AstroTurf over while we're yeah, at yeah. <laughs> Are, are we going to talk about AstroTurf? Are we going to talk about that briefly? Oh, oh, we can at the end. Let's get on. Um, yeah. What's up? Do you know what, what kind of toxicology do you use? Do you do? Well, I do it for pharmaceutical. No, not with my scent. Yep. No. So, but, so I wonder. But okay, um, folks, let's open the hearing for, um, uh, I guess, uh, for, for Nancy Way. There's a deed restriction. So let's talk about that show. Hi, I'm Doug Stam. I'm real estate agent. Okay, uh, folks, please. Representing uh, Dave and Julie Mitchell, uh, Walton property in Fort Nancy. We have the property under agreement. Uh, it's uh, for sale. And um, they, I think it was about six or seven years ago, uh, they finished off a 10 by 13 attic space and created a bonus room. And that room is, I guess, one room. Real estate guys don't make it any easier when you advertise it as having in-law potential. <laughs> well, this, this is the room that's upstairs, and I, I have an advertisement that way. <laughs> uh, Jim says it is. <laughs> So the house is uh, for sale and during the review of the file was determined the space in the house was completed without a building permit. The room count for the house with the finished basement advertised in the real estate listing as an in-law potential and the finished space is now in question. Uh, would require a five bedroom septic system. The house has a septic system for four bedrooms. So you, you might, according to Jim, it's advertised as having in-law potential, which really doesn't help your case much when you come before us. Um, <coughs> so essentially looking for a deed restriction so you can keep the four bedroom uh, system. Right. So, but you're advertising it as? Not any longer. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jim says, given the in-law potential of the finished basement and the number of rooms in the house, I would recommend a, a, a system for a five-bedroom be installed. I do understand why this creates a little bit of a dilemma for us when you tell us you want a four-bedroom deed restriction, but you advertise it as having in-law potential. Yeah, you're right. No, I, did, I actually didn't realize that mm -hmm. advertising it was sure. Here it, it is was again. a four-bedroom okay. system. You know, that's, that's my oversight. So we're not the sellers. Right. And the seller you know, did hire a contractor to actually finish this room off. We don't know why there was you know, a, a, a permit wasn't pulled at that time. Probably because it didn't have a five-bedroom septic system. <laughs> it was a surprise to the seller. Okay. Can we get an idea of the square footage of this area? Do you have plans or do you have uh, floor plans? Can we just take a look? I don't have floor plans, but I can tell you what the square footage is. Okay. I have, uh, well, the public record says that it's 2975. And I don't believe that includes the... Uh, bonus room, the, the 10 by 13 room, so that would be 150 square feet. 
and then there's a finished lower level of uh, 958 square feet. Holy smokes! And, and that's that's like a, a an area that could be could, could be a bedroom, has closet, has window space, has no closets. No, Is that the listing? Th does it yeah. have? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Does it have um, windows, though? Is it above grade? Yes. Is it above grade or is it below grade? It's okay. a pretty new house. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you mean it's, it's 2,975 and then there's a 9, 900, yeah. excuse me, 900 yeah, square foot lower level, yeah. in addition to the 29? Yeah. Yep. They have a permit pull down it. So we're looking at almost a 4,000 square foot house. With a basement, though. No, no. That, yeah. Special that features, great in-law potential. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a bathroom on the lower level? No. Separate bathroom? No. Just an empty room? There's a kitchen there. Oh, there's a kitchen. Yeah. Three. I don't care about the kitchen so much. Yeah, but yeah, sellability there. There's three. The practicality. What's up? There's three practicality. rooms in the basement. So there's three rooms in the basement? Yeah. They were, were, were finished without a permit? No, no they no. did have a permit. Okay. But one of them didn't. No. That's Three so rooms in the basement had a permit. There's four rooms on the main level. There's four bedrooms on the second level. And there's a room that was finished, a fifth room on the second level that was finished without permits. Okay. So it's approximate living space, 4,083 square feet. <coughs> what do you want to see? I Just take a look. How big is the lot? Ann? Uh, I'm looking. Just yeah, a so minute. 40, 40, uh, it's almost an acre. Okay. Yeah, it's very small print. Builder's lot. So total rooms is 13. Builder's acre. Yeah. Red by two and out of. Actually, so total rooms is actually 12. Um, so I divided up the living room and the dining room, which is all one big room into two rooms. Was it the current sellers that had that bonus room finished? Yes, they uh, they removed uh, columns in the garage and they went into that, and that same contractor finished off that room above the garage, 10 by 13. So that's the room that is that's in question is above the garage? Right, that's the one on the second floor, yes. And there's a, where's the kitchen, the basement or the second floor? The second kitchen. In the basement. So the in-law is this basement in-law? There's no in-law in this place. The potential <laughs> in-law is where? There isn't a potential. <laughs> that but contradicts anyway. what you told the buyers. Yeah. So, so, so should so. we be calling the AG about false advertising? Or <laughs> which, which is it? No, I, that's, I mean. Uh, Where's the potential in-law? Just please tell us. It depends. It, it depends on where, where, you know, it would look like probably. Well, when you wrote that in the listing, what did you have in mind? The, the basement? Yeah. Okay. It would be the lower level? Yeah. Because it's got several rooms and a kitchenette down there. Yeah, but there's no closets in any of those rooms, but yes. What about windows? But there's windows. Yes. And it's above grade. That's correct. Okay. And it has and a it separate entrance. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It is a separate entrance. And seven foot high ceilings in the lower level? No, about six and a half, yeah. Oh. Okay. So the ceilings in the lower level only six and a half feet? Something like that. Six and a half feet. Maybe seven. Yeah, I'm not sure. You have it measured, so you don't know. No. Okay. That would, they, they, were per, they, were, they were permitted, so I would say okay, that they were too cold. Okay. So it's right. over seven, if they're permitted, right? No, I got to tell you, Jim Gareffi's, uh given the in-law potential of the finished basement and the number of rooms in the house, I would recommend that a system for a five-bedroom house be installed. When you add bedrooms, you have to be sure that your septic system can accommodate. Yeah, exactly. So if I, a permit was pulled on this, obviously if it would have been pulled, it would have been rejected, but anyway, that's where, that's where their knowledge base is coming from. So it seems there's three options. A variance, which is what you're requesting, a deed restriction, or deed restriction rather. <coughs> um, 
we require that a, a, we have the option of either putting in a, a five-bedroom septic system or having that removed. I don't know. Is that having the, the work that was done outside of a permit remove a bedroom? Yeah, make the room unfinished right. storage space. Which is what it was when it was built. It was an attic space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Is, it, is the attic space heated? It is now. You know, we've had folks come before us who had an extra room they did. It was a playroom or something in the basement, but they never advertised it as having in-law potential, which is kind of what we're, becomes a much more pertinent issue of the septic. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sure. <coughs> the room in question is the one that's obviously upstairs in the second floor. Is the room above the garage accessible only through the garage or from the rest of the house? No, the room in the second floor is on the second floor hall. It's the end of the second floor hall. There's four bedrooms off and a full bath, and then that's at the end of the hall. Got it. Which used to be a you know, attic space. Got it. They use it for storage. <coughs> Do, did you talk to the owners about some of these options before you came here tonight, or the owners, are they virtually unaware of these three options? No, he understands, yeah. Their preference is a deed restriction. Yeah. Okay. Because they get, no. so the three yeah. options are again, install a five bedroom septic, septic, reduce the room count, or require restriction uh, be placed on the house limited to four bedrooms. That's it. Just go around and do the draw the straw thing again. I'm pretty torn, actually. <laughs> what are you doing? Again, realistically, we can put a restriction on it. They're going to use it however they want. Yep. Just same as Peter's. Yep. He admitted it. You know. Yep. And again, there's no closet in that room. It's just used storage. But it's easy to build a closet or put an armoire in there. Yeah, you know. It's a so I'll but use the I'm same logic I did with Peter, which is in the real world, this is going to be used as another room. Yeah, so they need a five-bedroom septic system, and that's so really expensive. So the also or they could world. unfinish that room, you know. That's true. They could unfinish it. So, um, yeah, I mean, me, frankly, I guess I'm, I lean toward tearing out that room. Well, I'd give them the option. Well, the, the option of either a Tearing out the room or a septic. Because... We'll tear out the room. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be it. But with it, it'll be forty thousand. Yeah, 000. very expensive. Yeah, yeah. I think I think this will always be our challenge. I think they should tear out the room. I think it's the cheapest. I mean, putting a five bedroom system is, it would be very costly, but somehow they need they need to agree. Number of bedrooms, septic system has to agree. See, the problem is we approve basically putting a restriction on there. We have a system where it's where it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. And, and again, frankly, the the real estate listing with the in-law potential didn't help your case with me any. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you know, I didn't realize understood. Four-bedroom system, you know, at the time. But we usually speculate on that. We usually don't have people point it out for us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <coughs> At least they were blatant. No hiding honest. here. We'll well, honest. 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 Yeah. So, honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, blatant to their intent. To me, the difference of this between the previous one that we had a discussion is, given the size of this house, there's a 
you know, the chance to hit, you know, push up against some of those flow rates are much greater than uh, I personally think than a small two bedroom house that a young guy can be living in. Yeah. So yeah. it to me because of this four slash five bedroom so they tear it out, and the next owners uh, decide they do want that finished, then they can deal with deal with the den, which will mean they would need to put in a, a septic system to accommodate that extra measurement. So I look at this as, if I look real world, the last situation in real world, it was what it is, it was pre-done, he's making it better, but it's always going to be a two-bedroom. Right. This one, real world, it's, if we approve it, it's always going to be a five-bedroom, but there's, we don't have the, the reasons to make this a five-bedroom that we did the other one. Right. Yeah. Or to leave it a five-bedroom. So I guess I would lean towards making that an uninhabitable bedroom. I don't know if that's removing the heat. That would be up to Roland. Roland? What, what would be required to make it okay. unfinished I'm, space? I'm comfortable leaving that to Roland. Mr. Cole, any thoughts? Uh, it's a four bedroom system. Uh, if it gets sold as a five bedroom, it's still only going to be a four bedroom system, but it's only going to be 20% less than what it needs to be to be a five bedroom. So. That's 5% better than the last one we talked about. No, what if we had only old people living there? <laughs> I don't know. Gino? Well, if you put the system there, the five bedroom is going to cost them a lot of money. And it, it does have four bedrooms for me. You know, it's different than the other one. Yeah. So it seems like folks are leaning towards not allowing a, a deed restriction. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. With a deed restriction? I don't have a problem with any of it. I mean, in the real world, they could have seven bedrooms in there after they buy the house. We'll never know. If somebody has to come in front of us, we have a visor and they, they have a mother. Well, unless they do a not pulling a permit again, but at least there's understand? a barrier to them yeah. using that yeah. as a fifth bedroom. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean that's, that would be a going for the current buyer. Just, right. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not his fault. I mean, you know. I mean, you can, you know, the deed restriction would help the, the current buyer understand that it's a four-bedroom. Right, right. And it should, should I think, can only be I think, I think that, yeah, Making it inhabitable would also be a very clear signal to the current buyer that sure. it's a four-bedroom. Yeah, and, and so, you know, if the total living area, and I know that's not part of the equation, but if the total living area was 3,000 square foot, and we were talking about an extra room, you know, then I'd be saying to myself, well, you know, there's only so many people you can fit, fit there. But we're looking at really 4,100 square foot of living area. So that's four bedroom, potential for a couple extra bedrooms in there. So you can put a lot of kids in there. You know, in the basement. Right. Basement. Basement. That's what the basement. Saying, basement and that adding that basement <coughs> that size I, I, sort of ratchets it to me a little bit. I would bet that basement went in after. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, yeah. What year is the hospital? I don't, remember, actually, I don't have the this deal. Was the hospital. was done in 2008 and it was permitted. The basement was permitted. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so the bedrooms are I'm sure all upstairs. Well, no, but I mean the rooms in the basement then are in compliance then with it not adding to bedrooms That's according correct. to yeah. Title Five. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and that one was permitted. It, it's the one room over the garage. Yeah, that threw them over the list. Ten by thirteen yeah. room upstairs on the second floor. Yeah. Two thousand and two was when the house was built. Okay. So we've been asked for a deed restriction. Jim's laid out our options. I think you've expressed a, an understandable preference not to put in a five-bedroom septic system. Well, the seller has anyway. Yeah, I, and I don't blame them. So it seems like the two realistic options are we grant the deed restriction or we require one bedroom to, per Roland's, through the discretion of Roland, to be unfinished. Or unfinished. Because or basically they, they have a building permit right now that has not been signed by the Board of Health, and Jim can't sign it because of all his conditions. So based on what the Board decides tonight, then that will go back to the building department tomorrow and they'll determine what to do with the permit at that point. So are we 
So we don't have to do anything. Well, yeah, you have to vote on whether you're allowing a deed restriction, whether you're making him do a five bedroom or whether you're making him unfinish the room. Okay, I think we can take the five bedroom off the table system. Um, whereas another cheaper option that you've expressed a preference for, I see no reason to push that. So the question is between, do we send it back to, do we grant the deed restriction or do we send it back to Roland to rectify the additional matter? I say send it back to Roland. I agree. It's trouble. I think it's a good message. I think people come in here all the time wanting this and that. Bedrooms have to equal your septic. They just do. Especially where it's it's controllable like this. The last one, I think it was a different situation. Because it had no, no place to put it. Right. Yeah, they had so no place to put it. There was a, you would have done it too bad. Something different than this. If you could have. Right. Whoever buys it, they want a five bedroom, they're going to have to make a modification if they like to have a uh, in law apartment. And, and frankly, with what's So, do you need a motion? I mean, yes, you want we me need to make a motion. motion? I'd like to make a motion concerning Four Nancy's Way that we um, request that there is. Um, a reduction of the bedroom counts for the house to align with the septic system output. No, you have to refer to this room. Whether you, you've got to refer to what you want done with this room. Yes, we want, we would like the room retrofitted back to its original form. For the discretion of the building. For the discretion of the building inspector so that it is not inhabitable habitable space. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I mean, you guys were honest about it. <laughs> Nobody was trying to get anything past this and we do appreciate that. So. Okay. All right. Um, so, I have one piece of business if you're, do you have permits to sign? Yes, you do, okay. What about a red right table? Yeah, those pictures. Fast Franks isn't here, so I think oh. we can skip that. Oh. What did you want these pictures? Yeah, please. My wife asked me about Thank this you. just the other day. And I said, oh, no, the I top one is just for Brian. Okay. So, so, so um, can, I, can I talk please. for a minute? Yeah. Okay, I handed out this, um, uh, what is it called? Memorandum of Agreement. And what's happening with the EDS system, emergency dispensing site, is that we have pretty much all the details done with it, except we don't have an answer for a lot of the little homes in town that service needy populations. Um, non mobile. Um, various, various reasons. And so one of the methods that DPH has for addressing some of these situations, and I'm thinking of uh, right now just the Life Care Center at Neshoba, where we're not going to shove everyone into a bus to come down to do an EDS when people aren't mobile, they're in beds, is we do what's called a closed pod, closed point of dispensing. And what that would entail is just an understanding and an agreement between the Board of Health, the Emergency Management Director, and the management at the Life Care Center, um, that this is how we're going to approach it, that some of their staff, their nursing staff, would be given whatever prophylaxis we're dispensing, if it's push packs, if it's vaccine, and they will administer, according to their policies, their HIPAA to their population, should we need to dispense to 100% of the population in Littleton within 48 hours, which is what DPH mandates. So this is a this is a agreement that um, states that we understand that and that that's how we will be operating when we do do an EDS, that we'll see them as a closed pod. We will contact them if anything is happening. We will discuss the best way that that we can dispense whatever it is that's being dispensed for whatever purpose. It could be biologic, if it's a viral issue, then it's probably going to be a vaccine, whatever is going on, and we, and we <coughs> utilize their management to come down to the EDS rather than making all of their clients come down to the EDS. And that's a fairly common method that people are using throughout the Commonwealth for 
dispensing methods. We also will use it in Littleton if we're just going to do push packs. We will just use a head of household. Will someone will come down for their household and go through the paperwork and be uh, right. given. So this is straightforward. We get swine flu. We get to vaccinate people. Right. The, we're not. The nursing home can do it, or we can send people out to the homes of people on mobile. But for those folks, somebody will come fill out the paperwork on their behalf. Exactly. All right. right. So easy enough. So I need you to sign this. Actually, this copy. The other one, the other copy is a draft. All right. Well. So if you can just sign this. Any objections to that? And you guys understand no. what I'm talking about? Yep. I just yeah. Sign, yeah. You I understand. Mean, yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's a formality, but it just allows it. So Jim and Scott and I met with the um, executive director at the um, Life Care Center today. So and quick just, question. Old just, person living on their own? Can you put? Oh, sure. What is the date? Um, uh, today is the 22nd. Old person living on their own where somebody can't come fill out the paperwork? I assume you bring the paperwork to them and go through it with them, right? Um, I think that's case by case. I think we're going to have to figure out. Well, there's going to be situations where you're elderly yeah, living alone who exactly. are mobile. Exactly. The, the and fire are pretty much on top of who that is. This is for the homes where they've got administrators over them. We call them close pods. There will have to be a lot of flexibility if we have to do this. All right, thank you. So I met with all these guys this morning, and we got all the details out of how what they need and what we need, and that's what this is. Okay. We, did we need to vote on that? We didn't need to vote on that. I don't think so. I think it's <laughs> okay. pretty straightforward. Did we want to right. discuss the turf thing? Uh, yeah, can we discuss it briefly? That? Sure. I've been hearing, um, getting emails for probably a few years, ever since this has started, some for, some against, some citing all type of, you know, toxicology this, toxicology that. I'm not a toxicologist. Fortunately, we got John here who is, um, and you've done environmental toxicology. So, did I sign that? So, um, I, I guess I want to understand, there are turfs, astroturf and artificial turf all over the U.S. We should have some data somewhere that says they're fine, they're not fine. Do we have any data? Well, most, most data you can find Will that in studies that have been published, um, you'll be able to cherry pick the data to support your particular stance. Okay. You'll, there are there's data out there that it you you can interpret it. Very easy to say that there is a health risk associated because there'll be a correlation of in a given area of a bump in leukemias or whatever. But but correlation doesn't equal causation, right? right? And all right. substances are right. toxic. And all substances are toxic. It's uh, it's it's all in. It truly is all in the dose. So the sorts of things that, and and the the EPA um, has actually come out and said to some extent. Look, there's no data that suggests that there is a connection between crumb fill, crumb rubber fill, uh, uh, artificial turf. Which, by the way. For the record, is different than astroturf, right? Astroturf yeah. is that 1970s <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff that tears ligaments. Yeah. This stuff is plastic grass that can be that long, and then it's got crumb rubber in it. And there are other types of fills, by the way. There can be bamboo fill. There can be cork fill. Yeah. Exactly. The the fill is there somewhat for cushion, for the most part, as I understand it. So, but there's been no studies that definitively link. Crumb, tire crumb rubber uh, with increased incidence of cancers okay. or, or any other, or asthma or anything else, any other disease. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't a link, there's just not been a link. So one has to ask, what's the route, when just looking at this, one has to think about what's the route of administration of a, of a toxin. So crumb rubber, you probably could ingest some. I imagine my son's played a number of football games on some local towns that have these things. The worst thing and the most annoying thing about it is his cleats fill up with the little rubber and we force him to take his cleats off before he walks into the house. <clears throat> One could imagine if there's cuts because you've fallen, the so rubbers could get in there. That, that level of exposure is going to be awfully small. But I'm speculating on that. That would be awfully small. Other ways that it could happen is if it leaches out. So in the rubbers, there are carcinogens in, in entire rubber, mm -hmm. right? There is carcinogens, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, biphenyls, polybiphenyls. <clears throat> there are, uh, and, well, it's been, 
that's pyrene in it. So, but but they have to leach that's out. And that's yeah. They, they have to leach out in some way. Now, mm -hmm. what level of leaching out that then would get into the bloodstream and then stay in the bloodstream that would cause cancer over time? Yeah, that'd have to be ingested. Is is is, is no, the actually, unknown. In this, in this, I think probably the most. Through the skin. No, it'd probably be dermal in this. It I, would mean, be, I mean, inhalation or dermal. It could be inhalation or through cuts, a cutaneous. Yeah. Cut. It, mostly, yeah. these things aren't going to. Um, because they're not going to come out in an oil mm -hmm. solvent that would then make them be transdermal. It would be cuts and then, you know, a scrape mm -hmm. on the skin and then, you know. But, but even for that to happen, it would have to leach out in some way. And the exposure but, would be short term. It would have to be in such a large dose. Right. The dose so, is important. So, so, you know, what's not been done, and I imagine it's an awfully expensive study to do it, what's not been done is exposure is exposure assessment so taking individuals that play on these fields for some length of time mm -hmm. and just quantitate measure the amount of these various things that are in there that's that's never been done that i can be that i can find that's the one of the missing links <coughs> time of exposure delay you know cancers are can be a five to ten year delay right so all those sorts of things have not been done now what someone who is just ropely against this will say well, you can't tell me this won't cause cancer, and they're right because you can't prove a negative. That and they can probably th find chemicals in there, which that, they have done toxicology tests uh, for, that do show it. The missing link is, are kids playing or residents nearby going to expose enough of those chemicals right. to cause a, a, a health impact? Right. Now, you can point to all kinds of chemicals in town that have the same thing. Gasoline is a known human carcinogen. It's probably one of the most potent human carcinogens we That's work right. with every day. And in fact, New Jer the state of New Jersey uh, laws, you cannot pump your own gas. Those are full-service gasolines in the full state of New Jersey, and that is one of the primary reasons. So, so they let some 15-year-old minority right. kid do it instead. Right. <laughs> so, um, so it, 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 and Brad's right. When, when you're going to assess the, some, the carcinogenic potential, you do a two-year study in rats at, in, at very high doses, mm -hmm. and you see if there's tumors, and, and then you link the tumors to the chemicals. You eat a burger that you've cooked on the grill, you're ingesting carcinogens, mm -hmm. okay? At relative aromatic hydrocarbons, at really higher, scary sounding stuff. <laughs> at higher concentrations than what you will in that could possibly be ingested, or in some way uh, get into the body by playing on these fields. Mm -hmm. Now that's, we that's do know that they cause cancer. I mean, one of the first epidemiological studies ever was chimney sweeps. Mm -hmm. right. And they sure. had testicular cancer in high, high doses because they get in their clothes and they would sit there in very high doses, right. probably not good hygiene in those days, right. and we saw that. And, and they were ingested, the, <coughs> the, vape, you know, the, the powders were ingested, things like that. So, yeah, so we know the chemicals cause it. The question is, do, does enough get into the body and for a long enough time that would cause the cancer? And that's just unknown. And none of the data... Mm -hmm says it it can't happen none of the data says it has happened we just okay. don't know we we don't know and the primary <coughs> reason we don't know is because we don't have assessment of exposure right mm -hmm. in any of these studies done and that's the missing link and probably what the epa will ultimately end up doing mm -hmm. no the alternative is you can say okay let's not do this there are too many unknowns mm -hmm. which one of the alternatives to that is you start using pesticides which many of which the, uh, there was a 1970 re-registration eligibility document where all the day sitting, a data is sitting there on a shelf, but EPA hasn't had the staff to review it. So there are unknowns on all of that. That includes some of the organic compounds they'd be using if they did organic turf, which I, we won't get into that. My point to the, to, to the woman um, who's concerned, and rightfully so, was this really is the town's decision. We don't have either the capacity, I don't think the mandate, or we need a process. I mean, if EPA yeah. would do this, they would have several peer review committees. Yeah. They would have exposure assessment specialists, right. which we don't have here. Could John and I do a review if we debated a lot of time? Yeah, but it really wouldn't have the vigor and, and that, that's really necessary to make a regulatory decision on this. Yeah. My perspective on this is we have some unknowns, we have some concerns. Personally, don't agree with them, but I appreciate those folks' concerns nonetheless, just like I do with pesticides. But just like with pesticides, individuals say, I'm going to eat organic, there's less pesticide exposure. And they can do that as an individual or family. In this case, where it's a community exposure, it's the community that really needs to make that decision, and everybody gets to make, get up there and make their case. 
sometimes well thought out, not well thought out on both sides of this one. And, and that's why I push this towards town meeting versus the Board of Health. Yeah. The turf. Now, the turf. Now, if, if, if the selectmen came back and said, what do you guys think? Or what would, you know, what, what, is, what, what do you think is the risk? We could honestly say, we don't know. We, can, we could do a thorough, as thorough review as we could yeah. of, the, uh, of the literature um, and then just based on that say well this is here's where the concern they would basically be much more coherent version of what I just said mm -hmm. there are chemicals in there that we know cause cancer in either people and by the way the list of definitive human carcinogens definitive that we absolutely know is very very small I think it's less than 20 known, known human, carcinogens. human carcinogens there is a huge list of suspected carcinogens but the known human carcinogens. So in the own system, it was known, which are class A, probable, which are class B. I think they changed this to make it more confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they did. Possible, which is C, and D, which is we don't know because the data isn't there yeah. one way or the other. And then there's E, which is it's been determined not to be, which is, right. I think, even smaller than the known. Which is, <laughs> right, because it's, it's so, so we would say, well, there are chemicals there, hmm. but, but we don't know, and the data isn't there. Now, one of the... Um, tissue. No. <laughs> one of the uh, my eye. one of the um, one of the other so some of the the data that's out there that says this is um, you know that 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 says that this is completely safe the argument against that data or those publications is that the research was underwritten by turf companies hmm. there's some validity to that argument but and I haven't gone in and done this frankly but it could be very easy to go in, for us to go in and look at where that was published right. and understand if that was a reputable peer-reviewed journal. Right. I can tell you, it doesn't matter who funds the, the research. If right. it's a peer-reviewed journal, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's, it goes through a peer-reviewed process right. before it's published. I and sit on an editorial board for a talk journal. It has to do with the quality of the study versus yeah. who funds it. Right. I, mean, we don't, I always we don't say, well, the, stu the, the industry funds this. Well, it's either the industry or us as taxpayers. Right. So the way we've set up the system is yeah. the industry does it with oversight from the regulatory agencies and the peer review process to make sure it's done properly. And it's peer reviewed. But as a taxpayer, I'm very glad the industry that. funds these because I don't want to do it. Right. I'm also glad I do fund people who oversee that and there's a peer review system for them to look at. Yeah, sure. So, so there's there, that would be to me the best. That I so I would suggest we not offer that up. But if the selectmen came back to us and said, "What do you? Is there a human risk, health risk? What do you guys think?" We could spend some time doing it. It wouldn't be as thorough as it would need to be because it would just would take too long. And even if we yeah. did it, we'd it's have a whole long mind. section on data gaps on unknowns, yes. yep. exposure, which is frankly more important than toxicology in a lot of these risk yes. assessments. Because yes. yeah. yeah. no matter how toxic something is, if you're not getting exposed to it, it's not an issue. But I suspect that the exposure assessment is there's a lot of data lacking in that. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. the missing. And that's piece yeah, that would, that would probably be, be the conclusion of the study. We can't make a definitive dis, uh, assessment because the ex exposure ex uh, data necessary to make such a decision is not available. Yeah, you need such a long term. And study. that, when people get up at town meeting, and hopefully there'll be some discussion of this, some people say, "Well, geez, I don't want my kids playing on it," and that's a very valid decision. But what I don't think is valid, us saying, well, EPA allows it and the state allows it and there's no definitive case, but we as a Board of Health are going to say we don't think it's a good idea. It's, it's given that, we need a process to come to that decision, and we don't have it here with a five-member volunteer board. Yeah. No, we don't. Okay, thank you. Sure. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye